Yeah, okay, so again, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Paolo Zhukov. I'm uh, a senior developer at Robusta Dev. Uh, today we'll be uh, talking about uh, Kubernetes management of resources and everything related to that. Why would we bother? And if someone doesn't know what is Kubernetes also. So uh, I'm a developer for 10 years already, and I'm working in Robusta for five months already. I'm working with Python for at least five years and with uh, Kubernetes for, I think, three. So uh, what am I doing in Robusta? Uh, so uh, the latest thing I did is exactly uh, ma the thing with management, ma ma resource management. So, and now I will be talking about what I've discovered, what I found out and stuff like that. So uh, what is Kubernetes actually, if someone doesn't know, uh, what, is, what is that? Uh, so to understand what's Kubernetes, we should understand what is Docker and what's containerization for applications. Uh, so what is Docker? Uh, Docker is a tool that allows you to uh, manage your applications in an environment like a virtual machine, but a really small one with Linux installed on in it. So everything that you run, despite where you run it, what uh, operating system you have, everything will be the same. This is really useful thing for everything. You could always con uh, containerize your applications if you're working with databases, anything else. And if you're a developer, it doesn't matter, like backend, frontend, it doesn't matter. It's really useful to containerize your application because it will be really easy to run them on your server, on your machine, anywhere. So uh, what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is the tool that was created by Google that uh, manages containers, their runtime, their orchestration uh, for running them in parallel, running, uh, managing everything related to them, managing uh, connections to each other, connections, uh, policies, everything else. So Kubernetes is a really huge and kind of hard tool to manage because it runs on a cluster of machines in the cluster of service, servers. So, uh, but it's really amaz an amazing tool that I suppose everyone should uh, learn if you're doing a development. Once again, it doesn't matter which one. It's a really interesting tool that uh, helps Google run their uh, application for millions and billions of users each second. And what's Robusta? Uh, Robusta is actually an application a startup that we are building on uh, the, the thing we wanted to do is to uh, make the work with Kubernetes much easier than it is by uh, providing all the uh, good stuff it could be like logs, observability, uh, explanations of errors, uh, scanning and everything that could, could help you with your management of Kubernetes, management for lots of different clusters and stuff like that. So um, what's resource allocation? Why does it matter? What, what, what's that? So each container, once again, in your cluster uses some amount of CPU, some amount of RAM, some amount of other stuff. For example, maybe you want to use GPUs. So uh, because you have limited resources, uh, you need to, uh, think and schedule how much resources do you want your application to to take. Uh, and normally, uh, because you cannot have unlimited resources and you never can have even uh, as much limited resources as you want because they cost money, mostly everyone uses uh, Kubernetes providers to like Google, uh, AWS, uh, DigitalOcean, uh, much, much else, other stuff. And you just pay for the cluster, uh, use it as a service because no one really wants to set up their own servers in their uh, like living room and then manage them and then everything like that. So you always buy those resources from a bigger companies that manage that for you. And because you do that, it, they will cost you uh, some money per month because you're renting them. So once again, you cannot rent huge amount of resources because they will cost you a huge amount of money. 
And even if you are a big company, if you're representing a big company, you always want to optimize that usage because once again, yeah, no one wants to pay extra money. Okay. Um, there's some uh, graphs that I found in the internet. Uh, I will not, uh, I haven't managed, uh, mentioned which one is which because I don't want to uh, say anything about any specific providers. So this is uh, exactly 10 nodes and the cost, there is a Google, Amazon, some, some basic providers for 10 nodes and you can see, and for a month, for 10 nodes, it could be drastically high numbers of money you should pay for a node. So for example, it, in average, it would be like for $1,500 per month for 10 nodes, uh, a bigger number for 20 nodes. But in reality, you might have much, much more than 20 nodes and your, your costs will go significantly higher. So, uh, to optimize this, we want to manage our resources optimally. And first, what kind of resources do we have? So each computer works and requires at least CPU and memory. Memory means uh, RAM. Uh, yeah, of course you have uh, other kinds of memory uh, and you can manage those one too. For example, you can manage NVMe, some other volumes. And one of additional types, maybe you have a GPU, maybe you want to do some computing on that, machine learning, maybe you have TPUs. You could have a various different types, but the most common one and the ones that you will always have is CPU and memory. So how would you want to manage it? There's two types of bounds that you set up for each type of resources in your uh, cluster. Those uh, bounds are requests and limits. So the request is the amount that we want to say, okay, our application takes uh, needs one CPU all the time, and it needs uh, at least 500 megabytes of uh, RAM all the time. So we say, okay, we request this amount. So to create this application in our cluster, we need always at least this amount, the request amount. The limit amount is what it's, uh, the name suggests. Uh, the maximum amount that it could have. So for example, if we are talking about a CPU, it's the maximum amount of the CPU that our application can use at one moment. And kind of similar uh, stuff with memory and uh, because yeah, it's the limit of how much memory, additional memory, additionally to request, it could use before getting killed because out of memory kill because it, uses too much memory. If it uses too much memory, Kubernetes will kill it and reschedule it, recreate it. We don't want that normally because we don't want our application to be down. So uh, what are the possibilities for the allocation? There's like three possibilities. The only one is good. All the other ones are bad. So the only good thing, the thing what we want is to set up a good request and limit to set up optimal values. Uh, yeah, so this is what everyone wants. And for example, you just created an application and you think, yeah, okay, it should use 400 megabytes of RAM. You just place the 400 megabytes of RAM. And if it's a good estimation, everything's good. Your company loves you, everything's good. But normally if you say, okay, it should use 400 megabytes, it's normally is either an over allocation or under allocation. So you either uh, say too much or you say not, to, uh, not enough. What would happen if you say too much? Then your application will be ineffective. It will require more resources than it actually needs. And you will spend more money on your infrastructure. Uh, and those money will be spent for nothing because your application doesn't actually need this money. And the under allocation, if you say that your application needs 300, but it actually needs more for the memory, uh, your application will break all the time because it will be killed because it doesn't uh, allow you to use that much memory. Or if the same will apply to the CPU, uh, it will just be slow because once again, it requires four CPUs and it uses 
uh, and only gets one. So it will be slow and it will be a poor experience for clients. Your project manager will be angry. Everything will be bad. So uh, what should we do about it? Um, normally, uh, from the study by SysDIC, uh, we can analyze the, they analyzed the AWS uh, clusters and looked into how inefficient they are. They found out that on average, 69% of the CPU is actually unused. And the 18% of RAM is actually unused on average. And those numbers are actually uh, depend on the amount of nodes that you have. So for example, a thousand plus uh, nodes will have like 50% of the CPU unused and the lower nodes will have a bigger amount of unused CPU. And as a result, it will uh, eat a huge amount of money for those companies. If you have a thousand nodes or more, it will eat like 10 or $11 million per month extra that is that you could save, that you could spend on not firing your uh, developers, managers, and stuff like that. So uh, the classic thing to do uh, as a manager of a cluster, as a DevOps, as a developer also maybe, is to monitor your cluster, your application. The common thing, the common tool to use to monitor it is a Prometheus. Uh, most of the clusters use Prometheus for metrics. Prometheus uh, is a really good thing to uh, gather metrics over time. You can gather any, any metric, but one of the common thing to gather is of course the CPU and memory usage. And for us, for our topic, it's really useful. So, um, okay, we gather some metrics. Uh, we look into them and there's like two possibilities. First possibility that the load is stable, that the application uh, all the time uses the same amount of resources. Maybe it's a little bit uh, random, maybe there's some peaks, but it's in, in result, it's stable. Uh, then it should be quite easy to understand how much does it need to use. And there is that other case where it's not stable, that it's stochastic. Uh, it uses different amount of resources all the time, then it should be much harder because then we will need to understand why it behaves like that. And because of that, you will need to understand how uh, to solve this issue based on what application you're looking into. So this is a harder question because you should be a developer to understand what you're uh, looking into. So this is an example of the request to get the CPU usage in Prometheus in its interface. So here, we can see it's a small application here. It uses from uh, 0 0.04 uh, CPU uh, each minute to some peaks here, 0 0.12. So here normally you should think, okay, where should I put uh, the request? So it's normally uses something like 0 0.8. Maybe I should put it a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, but in, in any case, it's kind of trivial task to solve. Somewhere here, somewhere, maybe here, so it's easy to understand what to do. And kind of the same with RAM. So here it's the same application and the graph for RAM it uses. So here we can easily see and draw some line where it should be here, maybe a little bit lower, but it's at least it's easy to understand what to do. A much harder thing could be if it looks like a uh, plot on a stocks exchange or something like that, you, you will definitely have some peaks, some, some strange behavior. And this one, this task is much harder because it's uh, for each uh, different application, it should be a different solution. So uh, once again, we did everything, we looked into everything like that, and we decided that we just need to automate this process. So uh, we, created a robust KRR. KRR is Kubernetes Resource Recommender. Here's the small image we've generated like a mascot for now. Maybe it will change in the future and it's actually was generated by artificial intelligence. Looks kind of cute. So what should you do to calculate everything? You just run the CLI, connect to your cluster and it will scan load 
all the uh, Prometheus uh, graphs and just calculate what should be uh, requests, what should be limits, like on this example. And this is the screenshot from the CLI interface. You could see like, okay, this, this application should use a little bit more CPU. This one should be, we use a little bit less memory and stuff like that. So it's really useful thing. And the, once again, coming back to this one, what about this one? How could you, how could we, what we just talked about it, it, everyone should solve it their way. We actually thought about it. And uh, in our tool, we integrated the ability to create your custom calculations for this data. So only 30 lines for a script, an example script, but still a script that just uh, have a class, have a function, you have a data here, and just you can do with every, anything you want with your data. You can calculate anything you want and provide recommendation here. And this code will just run and get a CLI that you could use to calculate anything for your exact case. So this is really useful for people who want to make their own calculations, they, their own stuff, because they know what's better for them. Okay, uh, some bonus stuff uh, on what should you do uh, with your application on how you can optimize it. Because we only talked about Kubernetes and like limits and stuff, but of course there's more classic approaches. For example, maybe you should optimize your code. If it uses like too much CPU, maybe it's just not optimal. Maybe you should just look into it, find some bugs. Maybe you're doing something wrong. And if you're a big, huge company, like the ones that has that have a uh, thousand nodes and overspending 10, uh, tens million, $10 million each month for nothing, maybe you should just spend that money to rewrite some of your services to some, uh, some more performant languages. But of course, uh, like you should understand it better if you're an architecture in your project, but it's always one possibility. Yeah, and one one more thing, uh, because you could also also test your uh, application to load it yourself to see how it works, how it behaves, how it uses application. One of the good tools that you could use is actually Locust. There's actually many more, but it's a simple Python uh, framework to creating a load test for your applications, and you could really understand how it work, how your application behaves, what resources it actually needs, and stuff like that. So, uh, special thanks to uh, Intelligence that helped me <laughs> to write this art, uh, this webinar to prepare for it. It's ChatGPT, a really cool tool. Thank you very much, and thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, anyone? Okay, 